my dad's motives for making the film were he had personally done with a uh, deal, dealt with a, a, a crisis of faith. Yeah. Uh, you know, born and raised and, you know, a Catholic and the death of his mother, which is portrayed in the exorcist in the original film. Right. Yeah. Sent him into like an emotional uh, tailspin and a crisis of faith uh, for various reasons, which resulted in his, him writing the exorcist. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, that was kind of in a way his life's work i mean his all of his emotions his feelings his attachment to his mother were reflected in that book and in that film so he had a passion about it definitely now these filmmakers i mean i i, I, don't, I don't blame them i mean it's not, it wasn't their passion to make a, an exorcist film um if it was then they failed mi miserably but obviously they were hired to to, to make a bunch of bucks for the studio Right. But you can see it. You can say, I, mean, I don't know what their history is. Maybe they liked the film. Maybe they liked it a lot. But you, you don't see it in, in the way they approach the film and the way this, the, the script was written and the whole production. It just looks like a, a cheap knockoff to me of an exorcist film. You know, I was thinking about this. Um, and I've sort of told the story before. Uh, after The Exorcist was made, and uh, the book had obviously did really well uh, for a year on the New York Times bestseller list. And then the movie, everybody knew it was going to be a big deal in the way that everyone knew The Godfather was going to be a big deal because mm -hmm. the book had been so big. And there was a lot of hoopla about the filming and who was going to be in it. So The Exorcist kind of fell into that same category of like uh, – blockbuster was was being made um um but after the success of the exorcist of the film i remember i was still a student at georgetown it was like my senior year my dad came it was my 21st birthday we actually celebrated on the steps of the george of the dam streets on the well now the exorcist steps mm -hmm. back then there were the hitchcock steps as you know right but um, so my dad came uh, to the campus and we were talking about the success of the film and so on. And he told me that Warner Brothers was after him to do a sequel. Right. Uh, and I said, well, you're, you're going to do it right. You know, because I figure, you know, <laughs> if they were going to pay him a ton of money. He had already made a lot of money. They were going to pay him. So you're going to do it right. And he, he was kind of astonished. He stopped in his tracks literally and said, son, I've already written The Exorcist. Why would I want to write it again? You know, and his point being, I told the whole story I wanted to tell. I said everything I wanted to say. It's so done. why would I want to add on to it or redo it or whatnot? Mm -hmm. And uh, and instead, you know, he could have made a ton of money. Instead, he wrote a book about his mother, a very quiet little book that he probably made very little money on. But... I always admired him for that because when he had the opportunity to make, you know, he was in a position to say no, but I mean, he could have made a ton more money by just doing his own uh, sequel. And he turned it down. Of course, 10 years later, for various reasons, he did write his own sequel, but right. you know, it's a whole different story. So the story has been told. And if people want to do sequels and prequels, one thing I would say is my dad never had any objection to it. I mean, he never felt that any of these things were going to hurt the the quality or the or the or the um, fame of of his original film. You know, people. His only concern when the heretic came out is he, he wanted to make sure people understood that he wasn't involved, right? With that because right. it was such a bomb. But otherwise, he didn't care. He sold the rights to the people who made this film. You know, uh, uh, he really had. You know, he was somewhat involved in, in with the people who tried to do the prequel, you know, the Dominion and so on. He tried to help out. I don't even think he was paid, but he, you know, he liked their project. But uh, when the TV series came out, I asked him about it. What would you think? He said, oh, well, you know, I watched the first segment and I kind of fell asleep in it. He said, I thought some of the acting was good. Mm -hmm. I think they kind of respect it. But you see, he, he had no particular interest and he wasn't worried. Was it good? Was it bad? You know? Uh, so that's the way I think he would have felt about this project. Like, but, well, I sold them the rights. If they can make a good film, great. But, I mean, I don't really care. I don't even think he would have gone to see it. 
and I think right. that's true of William Friedkin. I don't think he would have gone to see this film. Oh no, he he made that yeah. pretty clear. As as far as the not the makers of the film, but like the director and the the screenwriters and so on, they have a perfect right to to just be hired onto a project to make a buck. Right. Now maybe their heart was in it more than that, but there's certainly nothing wrong with saying, "Yeah, I'll, I'll be your director, I'll be your screenwriter, just pay me." And I'll do it and I'll do the best I can. So there's no problem with that being a commercial. But the difference between the two is my dad's reasons for making it were so uh, more personal right. and more serious. Yep. And you it comes across. It. And this, this, these movies, these sequels and prequels, they're all like, you can see, it's just made for the money. It's made to cash in. My dad's book and film, Exorcist, again, I'm repeating myself, are about faith right in god my dad was trying to i think it's a futile attempt he's trying to comfort people and, and convince people that there is a god there is life after death everything works out well in the end that was always my dad's um theme from you know the exorcist on um because That's you say that because it makes me think of just what you said was uh, that scene from uh, Exorcist Three where uh, was it the Father Dyer character telling telling Kinderman that same thing? Everything right. works out in the end. Right, and that That's was funny. my dad's mantra um, from the Exorcist on, because you know, as I say, he had suffered lack of faith, the death of his mother, other mm -hmm. things, and had come to believe. Well, had come to believe that. He said it many times. Um, what drew him to the story of possession and the original boy who was supposedly possessed, which I don't think he was, but um, my dad felt that if you could prove or seem to prove that there was such a thing as possession and devils, then it, it therefore logically had to follow that there were angels as well. Right. The opposite. And if there are angels, as, as he said, I'm, I'm I'm saying exactly what it said. There are angels, then there must be a God. And if there is a mm -hmm. God, there is an afterlife. That was his logical argument, which I think is full of holes, but that was his argument. So that was what drew him to the whole story of possession was as a proof of the afterlife. So but what I, all I'm saying is that if anyone wants to do an authentic exorcist movie, they have to start from that point of view. And that has to be the essence of their theme. But there's an there's no point in somebody else doing it. It's just like trying to replicate somebody else's point of view and somebody else's work. So that's why, you know, I call this, as you know, the curse of the exorcist. The real curse of the exorcist is there will never be a good prequel or sequel to the exorcist.